What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today we're gonna to be making a cocktail, another nightcap, which I have kind of stayed away from for a while. So it's been hot weather, uh, and so I've been doing a lot of shaken cocktails, a lot of tiki cocktails, lots of good colorful things for the summer, but it is time to get back into the stirred cocktails because we are going into that season. It's gonna start getting a little bit colder, and uh, you know, stirred cocktail season. Now, I know that stirred cocktails don't always look the most, you know, uh, like cocktail to cocktail, they don't, there's not a lot of variety in their color. They're either like a golden color or a brown color or a red color. But uh, we're getting into that season and I would just say, you know, try these drinks anyway because they are fantastic and we're really trying to pair up the flavor profiles with the season. So this cocktail is called the Storm King. It was created by a bartender named Damon Bolt who uh, works or, or has, had worked, I'm not sure if he's still there, at a Brooklyn bar called Grand Arty, which is a raw bar and a cocktail destination in New York City, Brooklyn. And what I like about uh, what they do is that they kind of got an eye, toward, an eye towards sustainability, but also I was looking at their summer cocktail list and all the cocktails are named after semi-precious stones. And then each one kind of tells you like underneath what the semi-precious stone is and then like what it's good for, like whether it's good for health or luck or whatever. And I thought that was just very, Cool, I love a themed cocktail menu. They make me so happy. For instance, we had a bar, uh, there's Lily moving around around the house. Just, Lily, you know what? Sit down, Lily, come on. Go, go find a spot. Daddy's working. There she is. And there she went. All right, so uh, where was, oh, so we had a bar uh, called Bebo Ergo Sum that did a whole menu that was based on the three different um, like pillars of being a magician. So it was like, what are they? They're, they're like the reveal and the prestige. It was pretty cool. I loved it. Uh, Marius actually went to that bar and got a cocktail with me there. We went with our other mutual friend, uh, Andrew, and we met him there one time. It was a while ago. Marius was looking around like he doesn't know what I'm talking about because it was that long ago. All right, let's get into the cocktail, this perfect nightcap cocktail. Also, somebody was like, hey, I appreciate that you did something with Benedictine because we just uh, released the junior episode that has Benedictine in it. And someone was like, I only, I bought this bottle of Benedictine and I've only used a half an ounce of it. So I'm gonna help you use another half ounce. Is it the one across from the Ivy? It's the one across from the Ivy, right next to that, the Henry or whatever. Right. All right, cool. Uh, I'm actually not going to, you're not going to use a half ounce of it. You're actually using a quarter ounce of it, but it's another cocktail with Benedictine to help you use that bottle. All right, so first thing we're going to do is just a few dashes of Angostura bitters. Uh, and then we're going to do a half an ounce of Nocino, which is walnut liqueur. Um, you can make your own Nocino. I'm actually using a a branded one, but you can you can actually make it. And maybe I will take you through the process of that below. Or maybe we shall make a video on it, I don't know. Then we're gonna do a quarter of an ounce of Benedictine. Yes. And then two ounces of blended scotch. We are using monkey shoulder today, because why not? I like the shoulder of the monkey, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then we are going to Crack our first piece of ice, throw it up in there, get some other ices up in there. Don't be shy with the ice. If you're using good quality ice, you just fill it all up. Ooh, drop some, throw it up on in there, there you go. And uh, I stir, I stir, I stir. It's funny because, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, Marius, I, w I, w I wanted to tell Marius this, I didn't tell him this. He's gonna look at me like I'm crazy because I didn't actually say this to him. But this week I was thinking, you know, I am not gonna forget anything for 10 episodes in a row. Huh. And I just wanna see how people react to me for like not forgetting stuff, right? Because I think people would miss it. There are some people that are just like, oh, you're so unprofessional, you, all you do is forget things. God damn it, why can't you just be perfect all the time? And you know what, that's fine. But a lot of people I think would miss it. Um, it is definitely part of the show, but I wanted to try like a whole bunch of episodes where just nothing was at all, um, at all uh, forgotten. And the thing is, is that, you know, I say that now, I'm halfway through this cocktail, I realize I don't have this thing that I need. And then I'm fighting with myself, like should I just redo this whole video, make the day take longer, even though everything else was perfect, all of the history or where this drink came from, it's all good. We're stirring it down or whatever. What I need is within arm's reach. 
Get it. from where I'm at. But, I, I mean, t truth be told, I did forget something. All right, I'm gonna grab it. It's just within arm's reach, all right? I'm just gonna pluck it out, bring it back on set, put it here. Um, and there we go. It's nice and chilled. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, I'm gonna revisit this question from a long time ago. People ask me like, hey, Leandro, why don't you use a chilled glass? Well, here's the thing. When I'm serving things to people, I absolutely use a chilled glass all the time, every time. You want the glass to be chilled because this is an unstable cocktail. And what I mean by unstable is that the cocktail is not sitting on ice in the drink. As soon as you pour it, it starts to get warm. You need a chilled glass. But for the sake of this channel, I don't use a chilled glass because I want you guys to get a good representation of what the drink looks like. It really sucks when I look in certain apps, cocktail apps, where they take a picture of a Tom Collins and the Tom Collins looks blue and they're obviously using a blue filter because there is no blue curacao in there. There's no blueberry syrup in there. It's literally just lime, I mean, sorry, lemon, simple syrup, gin, and soda water. What is making it blue? Well, obviously it's either a light filter or a camera filter that's making it blue. And yet when somebody's like a novice cocktail maker and they look at their, the picture and then they look at the, the Tom Collins, they're like, why does my Tom Collins not look blue? What did I do wrong? Well, you didn't do anything wrong, and that's why I do that. So I'm just, you know, I'm just putting that out there, again, for no reason. Nobody's even commented on it recently. It just occurred to me as I was doing this. All right, then we're gonna strain our cocktail. And this recipe calls for three brandied cherries. I do not have any brandy cherries. I do not make any brandy cherries, but, uh, so I'm gonna use Amarena cherries that were made by a brandy company, Argonaut. And I have a few of those brandy, I have a few of those cherries, those Amaran cherries, and that's good. I love it. And then we're just gonna do that. Bam, there you go, there's the drink. Let's, let's move this garnish this way and take a, take a little sippy poo of this. Oh, that is wonderful. You know, the Nachino, right, which is this walnut liqueur, has this like wonderful sort of semi-sweet walnut flavor blends so well with the scotch. And you've got that sort of light smoke to the scotch. You've got the, just a tad bit of kind of spice and sweetness from the Benedictine pairing so well with that like mid palate walnut flavor. It is so good, I wanna keep drinking this. My wash line's gonna be all screwed up for the thumbnail because I just wanna drink this so much. Oh, that is beautiful. That is, a per that is a perfect nightcap cocktail. That is something that I would end my night with. It is uh, not strong, but it's booze forward, which I like. It is very, very, very smooth and super elegant, a very refined cocktail. I love the presentation of the three cherries as well, even though that's gonna seem a little arrogant because I made the garnish, but this is the garnish that was, uh, was put forth by the creator, the cocktail's creator, so it's, it's not me, it's, it's Damon. Damon, Damon Bolt, you are one classy fellow. Uh, so there you have it, guys. Uh, the, uh, the Storm King. If you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe. And check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash educatedbarfly. We rejiggered our spec. I said we rejiggered our specs as if we were making a cocktail. But we rejiggered our tiers on Patreon. And I gotta tell you that we have uh, only three tiers. We've got a $1 tier for those people that just want to like see some blog posts and give us a buck and whatever, which is awesome. If a million of you guys gave us a buck, we'd be doing pretty well. So a dollar is awesome, we love it. You guys are really helping the channel. Then we have a $10 tier, which is um, a couple of different uh, exclusive videos, exclusive live streams. And then we have a $20 tier, which gets everything that the $10 tier gets, but then at the end of the year, once you've subbed that for one year, we give you a gift box filled with goodies. And those are gonna be good goodies. And this, my friend, is something that you might find in that gift box. Just saying, these awesome Argonaut uh, Amarena cherries might very well find their way into one of those gift, spot, gift boxes. So just saying, just letting you know, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, say no more, say no more, as they say on Monty Python, I will see you guys on another time.